this will be a this will be a very short segment uh, aimed at the field investigators that we're working with uh, to cooperate with Project Match. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, uh, basically, um, we're we're getting reports from from MUFON, and when we do. Uh, they're automatically being investigated or have been, so that, that's no issue. Uh, where we're having the problem is, and uh, that needs to be more clarified, is we're getting a, an equal number of more, actually more uh, reports from New Fork, the National UFO Reporting Center. And uh, just to let you know, uh, you know, Peter Davenport's health has not been too good lately. But Christian Stepien is his technical uh, director. He probably does more web work than anything, but he's uh, kind of taken over the helm of, uh, of the calls. So whenever we need information, I, uh, I work with uh, Christian. And uh, generally what happens is uh, Jeremy Haslam is my uh, UFO officer, and it's his job to go through that 30 days you know, each month, like right now we're working on the month of January. And he sends me a list of, uh, of uh, potential sightings of interest, something that will be, you know, worth going after. I mean, it's nice to have a MADAR uh, hit or a MADAR data with something, but if the sighting isn't very technically interesting, uh, it's not going to turn any heads. So whenever we get this, um, we, uh, I, I do a workup which is sort of like an intel, which shows the maps and where the sightings are located in relation to the uh, MADAR. And, and then when I go into the data, if there's, if there's a uh, uh, information in the spreadsheet, I, we get pretty excited at that point. And I, I call for a CIR, which is a contact information report uh, with uh, Christian. And then I get it back usually saying that there is no contact information available or no pre-authorization uh, or here, here you go and when we get that well we're always excited and we forward that on to uh, someone in MUFON to check it out. Uh, but what's interesting about it is um, uh, once we get that contact information when you field investigators contact these people you you have to realize that they've already given the, uh, permission for us to check it out. So you don't have to feel bad about it when you go in there or feel funny at all. Uh, these are, uh, you know, pre-authorized or uh, in some cases where there is no pre-authorization, uh, Christian will do what he calls a reach out and he'll call them and say, is it okay if we do this? And then sometimes it's really sad. We get a real good flying saucer, technically interesting sighting, and he'll come back and say there's no way of contacting the witness, witness at all. So, And we've had a few of those. But anyway, uh, it, it, it's not that difficult, uh, but these are, these are sightings that are uh, tied with MADAR, and you have to realize that if it was MADAR, radar, or passive radar, these are the kind of cases that we really need to set a priority on. And they're already 30, usually 30 to 60 days old uh, by the time we get them. So that's why it's important for us to jump on them. But anyway, uh, with that, I will uh, let you get back to what you were doing. And if you need any information or you have any questions, just uh, contact us here. Thank you.